Hello friends, Buffer Kid back again at Star Trek Online. Continuing my Star Trek Online 2018 Delta Recruit playthrough, we have taken command of our ship and we are getting ready to start our next mission here. Communications breakdown, we're still a cadet because we won't get our full field commission until we speak to Admiral Jorrell Quinn in Earth Space Dock. But of course, right now I was able I was able to claim we have our first, this is our second starship, but our first sea store starship. So I went ahead and I've got the Toss Light Cruiser, cruiser here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up real quick. And I've named her, of course, the USS Hood. Naval Construction Contract 1703. And uh, even though it shows the visual hasn't updated to reflect the name change of USS Hood. It still shows as USS Seattle, NCC 9345491, but this is the hood. It's in name of the, it's named honor the, the Constitution class USS Hood. Because what's great is now in Star Trek Online, we have reg, they've given us registry numbers now that go to, to zero three now. Anywhere, so you have you can have number range from zero three up to ninety nine ninety nine ninety nine ninety nine. And this is this is great now. So now I'm using a lot of cannon names for my ships, and this one will this character will command the USS Hood throughout her career. Now I've crafted all the gear with the on this ship, with the exception of the phasers, because the retrofit phasers actually come with it, and these are pretty good. These are auto leveling, twin phaser beam array, crit, hit, and damage. So these are these are pretty nice to have. When I first did the did the playthrough on my original DR Carly and her ship USS Lampasas. I actually put quantum torpedoes on it, but keeping with the cannon build of this, I went ahead and crafted a photon torpedo and I crafted two of them because I forgot that this only has one forward firing weapon. So so that's why I went ahead and craft two. But this one is accuracy damage and snare. Um, the deflector array we're using is a positron deflector array mark to um, see, control the exotic particle generator and shield heal. So this so this gives us a plus 7.5 starship shield restoration, plus 5 to the starship hull capacity, plus 5 to the shield capacity, and of course a plus 2.5 to exotic particles. So like say um, the aceton beam, the endothermic uh, inhibitor beam and of course the gravity well which we will be using later on this this will help us out now I mentioned I'm claiming this right here this is from the this year's first contact first contact event here this is the Bozeman hyper impulse engines mark 2 speed times 3 this is reclaimed this is reclaimed in the dive store if you unlocked it during the um, first contact day event a couple weeks ago about a week ago so if you were lucky to get this, this is a great starter engine for you. And it's going to be great for our toss like cruiser here. Now the the warp engines, I've crafted a plasma integrated warp core mark 2 engine to weapons with engine capacitor capacitor and sector speed. So it's going to give me plus 100% power transfer rate. Maximum warp factor is 5.62 and it's based on my sector space speed skill, which I don't have anything in there yet. And then plus five to starship sector speed, which uh, of course improves my travel speed in sector space, and then adds plus 7.5 percent of my engine power to weapons power as bonus power. And of course, the engine power buff for 15 for plus 15 for 10 seconds with a four-minute recharge. And the shields here are a covariant shield Mark II anti-proton plasma and tetrion. So this is this is gonna reduce the tetrion, the antiproton, and plasma damage here using these shields. And for my engineering consoles, this I'm using the enhanced plasma manifold from the uh, from the Old Earth Light Science Vessel. This is tier one starship. So this is in the sea store. You can you can get this ship once you've unlocked it. You can claim it. I'm just using it for the console because it, it it's gonna come in handy. And originally when I did I crafted a neutronium alloy so that's why I was able to take a beating but this time I decided I was going to go with the EPS flow regulator mark 2 and add more to my power transfer rate 
Now for my science console, I'm using a field generator. So this is going to boost my, my maximum shield capacity. It's going to help out a lot. And of course for my TAC console, I'm using a phaser relay mark 2. It's going to boost my phaser damage, especially with the twin, the twin phaser beams. And I mentioned in my last video here that I was going to claim a unique, I was going to have a special surprise, a special console for this ship that I was planning to use. And I was like, and I mentioned this in my last playthrough that this console was only obtainable through either the, the Perfect World live stream on Twitch, which now they, they do a 10 forward stream. Now I don't know if they still give this out. Or if you bought the Star Trek Online uh, Collector's Edition back in 2010 when the game first came out and you got the code, you were able to have this account-wide unlock. Well, with the advent of the Phoenix Prize Pack that was that came out a couple years ago, came out about a year or so ago, what they've done is they put a lot of unique items in the Phoenix Prize Pack. So if you missed missed the opportunity to get, say, certain ships or certain items. You buy these Phoenix Prize Pack with Dilithium, and if you get the to if you get the token, so there's an epic token, there's a ultra rare token. There's very rare, there's rare and uncommon. You have access. You have access to claim unique stuff. Now the last one was a, was a, was about a month ago, and I bought a lot of Phoenix Prize Packs on them. <laughs> I've used up a lot of Dilithium on this account just to get Phoenix Prize Packs. And I had built up a lot of very rare tokens. I had like 21 and then I had like 50 rare and I think 50 uncommons. I've used a lot of the uncommons and the rares for Phoenix tech upgrades. And I've used a lot of the, the very rares for the Phoenix tech upgrades too for other characters to upgrade their weapon which now it's upgrade weekend but anyway but this is one of the unique items that that you're able to get. If you get a very rare token, you can clash that in to get the same. And that of course is the red matter caster. This was only available to if you got the pre or if you got a a, a collector's edition or a certain pre order of Sardic Online or you for account unlock or if you got it from the from the live stream because if I go to the C store here real quick, I'm gonna see if I can see if I can find it. Because yeah, right here. Yeah, see, this this was my first red map capacitor that I ever got promotional, and it's only once on my account. So, and that of course my main character has it. The a-hole Vulcan has it because it was only and this is given from the live stream. But now with Phoenix Prize Pack, if you got very rare, you can claim this red map capacitor for however many tokens that you have. So I had three left over, and I was saving those especially if I did another another playthrough. And I went ahead and used that, used one of them to get the device because I want it for this playthrough. So she now has the red matter capacity. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my character here. Now I have her ground gear already crafted. As mentioned, I've done that beforehand. And she is using an energy depthing armor mark 2, hit point, HPP, and phaser damage resistance. So she's going to have maximum hit points, whole, uh, uh, healing and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be handy now for her shields I'm using a personal shield mark 2 capacity phaser and regeneration as mentioned this was crafted I've crafted these on my main character the a-hole Vulcan this right here you claim this this is a another claimable item this is if you bought the if you get the 23rd century bundle which you actually gave away free you can claim that and get that phaser as you see, it has the boss dress uniforms, the medical uniforms, the toss to it, the interiors for the original series, the uh, shuttle here, the class F shuttle. So, and the, and the, this is this is pretty nice to get. So all you gotta do is claim, and then they give you this uh, this Federation Type Two phaser right here that's auto wing. And it's going to come in handy, handy, because it's just, it's going to level with us. I won't have to craft anything else, except for other items throughout this, uh, this playthrough. And for her, for her assault rifle, I've, I've crafted a phase full auto rifle, mark two, crit damage, damage times two. So it's going to have us out on the ground, even though we're, we already got some of the items, but I like to craft my gear, because it gives, I get better options, and plus two, I can upgrade down the line if I want. 
Now a couple other things here. Um, I claim this from the C store as well. This is the Inquisitive Tribble, and it's gonna it's gonna give me a 1.5 all damage resistance rating for 3,600 seconds, and of course plus two percent experience points for 3,600 seconds. Which I mean, this is double XP weekend anyway, so it we're gonna level real fast throughout this playthrough. Now for my bridge officers I have right now, Eliza, she is you I given her an energy dampening armor mark to regen HP times two and regen shield so it's going to be great for her and for her shield she's using a personal shield marked capacity with regen times two and for her weapon she's using a phaser full auto rifle mark two crit damage crit hit and knock back one and I've given her I've gotten this as well too the promotion this was given to me from promotions the email I think and I don't know remember how I got this. I think I got from either the, uh, oh, the play th the plays.tv or whatever. I can't remember what it was, but this is the Edict Tribble, uh, Infinite Diversity and Infinite Comp- Comp- <laughs> I'm bad, I'm, I'm bad. Let's see if I can pull it up. Let's see if I can pull it up here. E yep, right here, the Edict Tribble, yep. Yep, Infinite Diversity and Infinite Combinations. This is one. Of the, this is one of the things that I claimed, and this is actually I give this to my bridge officers because this is gonna it's gonna give us a boost on the, on ground combat. So I give it to one of my bridge officers. I don't give it to myself. I give it to one of my bridge officers, especially Elias on my tack my tack officer, my first officer. I want her to be able to use that. And it's gonna boost us in, in ground combat. And Zarba, she's not going to join us on ground yet, but she will later on. And I'm, I've given her an energy dampening armor, Mark II, phaser with phaser disruptor damage resistance, uh, physical, and regen health points. So it's going to come in handy for her down the line. So, and the rest of the items right now are for the or for my other bridge officers when I get them. So when I get to Vril, she's going to get some items. She'll get this gear. And then when I get Cola, she's gonna, he's going to get this gear. So, and originally I crafted the other Photon Torpedo Launcher here. Accuracy times sprint crit D, which I should double check that. I think the match. No, that's accuracy and damage and snare. And then, of course, I crafted the Hyper the, the super Impulse Engine, even though I was decided I was going to use the Bozeman one. And this one had auxil auxiliary uh, dampen and turn, but like I said, I'm gonna use the bows one. So, so that's pretty much our gear here. And pretty all these items right here. This, these were our mission rewards, and some of these came from the other ships I had claimed, like the the tall flight cruiser here, and then from the Oberth science vessel. And what they do is every time I switch starships, it it kind of uh, it just I put them and put them in my inventory. So. I'm gonna get rid of that when we get to Earth Space Talk. So anyway, we're ready to go here. So let's go ahead and begin communication breakdown. We're here, Captain. The USS Kittimer is dead ahead, Take and the renown is beside us. Time they're trying to our orders are to make contact with the Kittimer and crap. find out why they've not responded to our there hails. We go. Okay, very good. Set course for the Kittimer. As you see right there, that's the lamp of the Bozeman Hyper Impulse Engine right here is the Bozeman Throttle Manipulation. So this is yes, really going to kick I in. Yes, will require approximately 15 seconds to make the necessary adjustments. All right, so we're going to hail the USS Kimmer. Uh, All right, Attacker. let's cut through the stack, boost the signal. Understood. Okay, so do I want to say not Captain Taggart, sir? I'm in command of the Captain Bullock. We attempted to inform you that the round would be a sortie's cadets back towards space dock. But we were Captain Bullock. We were unable to establish a subspace link. I'm also Captain Bullock. I thought it would be I always prefer the senior author. I'm relieved to see both of you. The anomalies must be interfering with our communications. Where's Captain Taggart? These cadets were the unfortunate victims of a Klingon ambush. Captain okay, Tech so I explain is what dead, happened to Captain and the ship is under the Captain command Bian, of this cadet. Actually, yeah, the renown was escorting them back it. to it's where they stopped. But when we could not risk the Kittimer, I deemed it imperative to alter our course and assess the situation. Captain Yim, what is your status? I'm troubled by anomalies in this system. 
And if they're affecting long-range communications, then they're doubly a cover concern. Let's do this by the number. We've already launched nine probes. Now that they're active, we can do an in-depth scan of the anomalies. With all three ships collecting data, we should be able to complete this quickly and formulate a course of action. The Renown has the largest science team, so I recommend we send our data there for analysis. Any questions? You're quite confident for a cadet. You remind me a bit of myself when I was in... Of course, I wasn't commanding a <laughs> ship back then. Um, Let's see how you perform right. before you start claiming no that question, chair full sir, time. I'm confident that my crew is up to the task. Reports indicate traces yeah, of gamma radiation, but there's in here. something off really gives readings. Us a boost. So this is going to be real nice in, in missions. Kinemer here. We're seeing the same gamma radiation levels that we are. I'm not sure that a null scan will be enough. We might need to have a full multi-phase like rating. Like the that the, the engines give. My chief science officer, Commander Davis, suggests that forming a reverse tachyon pulse scan will solve the sensor issue. Perform your five scans and then report back. We saw the same issue. How can we improve our findings? Deflector dish is real on for a reverse tachyon pulse wave, sir. Picking up a transwarp no, signature. It's right on top of us! The board! <laughs> the Borg. Ooh. <laughs> I just love how I just pick the red knife. Tossla Cruiser. The Kinemer is being overwhelmed by Borg boarding parties. These Borg are different than the ones in my history records. They seem disconnected somehow. They're strange. Zachary Quinto, dangerous. Spock, how you doing, my man? EMH, give me a situation report. I am an emergency medical hologram, not a miracle worker. Can you hold on, on your own? We have problems of our own to deal with. bridge was damaged in the Borg attack, Captain Yim may have activated the EMH okay, to alert Okay, so us. here's our career specifics. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Engineering Captain Bullock. Someone must have activated the EMH to the bridge. However, I hesitate uh, to speculate without the full data from Bullock. You're not Captain Bullock. You're Captain Yim. What the heck? I will send teams to aid the Kittimer. You will have to finish the scans. We need to know the extent of the Borg presence here. You must also inform me if you or your crew are unable to continue. The Borg what evoke a strong emotional response that can rattle even trained Starfleet officers. A crew of cadets that have already survived the Klingon attack may be unable to cope. Choices here, should I say good idea for us? What is our status? Or I trust my crew. We'll get the job. I trust my crew. We'll get the job. Sorry, I'm gonna change to strategic maneuvering here. This will help us. 
us out with turn right. We have your data, and our science team is analyzing it now. Our tactical teams have eliminated the Borg boarding parties on the Kittimer. Why do you ask? Okay, so now we're going to transmit the data so to the Renault. There's an 88.47% chance that you will need my help. What is the status of the Kittimer? I have 75 million gigaquads of computer memory and an extensive library of files on military tactics can and we command strategies. To analyze the data? I believe I can spare a few bits of processing power for you. Agreed. Can you help the, help the Renown analyze the data we've accumulated in this system? Admiral Janeway. We're surprise they would have large numbers of new drones at their disposal the Kittimer was badly damaged and there are many casualties captain Yim is gravely injured but he will recover we are still working on triage and restoring the Kittimer's critical systems this leads me to our next course of action you must go right, to the Vega column the the and warn them that the Borg are coming the Renown is better equipped to hold off further Borg attacks and assist the Kittimer. It is logical for us to remain here. We will delay the Collective, but you must warn the colonists at Vega. Yes? This is not a matter of can, Cadet. It is a matter of must. What about we you? must buy you as much time as possible. Once we are no longer in a position to help, we will stage a tactical retreat. You should have enough time to warn the colony. I will attempt to summon additional ships to assist, board? but you cannot wait for them to arrive. We have to make our way to Vega as soon as we can, Captain. I just hope we're not too late to warn the colony. Are you ready to go? Shields up! Red alert! Ah, 
That's a lot of boards there right there. It's imperative that you warn the colony at Vega of the impending attack. We will do what All we right. can to hold off Let's the board here and in Vega our power and repair here. So the we Kittimer. are going to hail Live long Captain Bullock to, to report. Let me do extend this a little bit here. So let's hail start. Congratulations. Okay, so this mission will reward us 6,000 experience with 720 FTs. We trail to plug array mark 2 crit X. Hold on to a P launcher mark 1 accuracy. A shield emitter amplifier mark 2 to met and give us our first captain power evasive maneuvers. And of course, here we go. This gives us our. So here is Tavril. So now she is part of our crew now. So I'm pretty sure this gave us okay. So yeah, not yet for that. Let's check. She gave us okay. So not yet for the skills. So okay. So this completes communications breakdown, and our next mission will be assimilation of the innocent, where we will go to the Vega system and we will get our final bridge opposite to Coles. In fact, speaking of that, let me go ahead and get to Vril quick, quick here, so she'll be ready to go uh, when uh, when we start getting into the story arc missions. So, Alright, she's all...